Hi everybody, I'm George Buman, and here we are in the studio and um, had some great wolf viewing over the last few weeks here not far from home in northern Yellowstone. And so I came away from that with some really great um, ideas to try out. So I've got uh, a number of pencil sketches here. I'm not sure if that shows up terribly well, but um, just ideas, you know, rough, even stick figures to uh, basically solidify in my memory um, what I saw. So the first idea I had um, after watching this pack of about 14 wolves cross over a big open flat was when they all started taking their turn at laying down and resting. And just the one wolf's gesture, it was laying somewhat on a hill, a low mound, really. And so um, it just caught my, my imagination, it just the, the gesture, the feel, the, the potential energy in that wolf's um, body as it was sitting there, listening, watching the rest of the pack, on this interesting little raised knoll. And I'll do a lot of these. I might do 15, 20 or more um, before I find one that's really worthy of um, a finished sculpture and casting in bronze. So this particular wolf I was watching that did this was a pup. A pup from this past, um, well, last spring now, um, and it just had that playful, carefree sort of manner about it, and and part of the the stance or rather seat that it took was a a, a secession of this crazy play behavior that was exhibiting with its its siblings. Okay. That's kind of close, at least capturing the, the feel of that idea I sketched out on paper. Um, actually, it was this one right here. If you can see that little sketch of that wolf, and there's one sitting next to it, its playmate, kind of looking down, waiting for another one to come, maybe one of their next victims <laughs> in this big game of play they're having one afternoon. So I'm going to put this one aside. I'm going to start on another. Alright, so looking at my sketches here. Oh yeah. We had one um, actually with one wolf greeting another one. So they'd been traveling across this big open expanse and one by one they started to lay down. And as they did, the others that were arriving sort of joined them. But before they laid down themselves, they checked in with everybody else who was already there. And there was this one real interesting moment where one wolf came up on top of the other, not standing on it, but, but right up in front of it so that it was sort of looking down at this bedded individual. And they sort of had this, this interesting exchange. There, there was no vocalizations or anything like that. Um, but there was definitely this recognition between the two of something that they had, um, they had in common they maybe had an agreement <laughs> you don't lay down next to me I'll I won't lay next to you but this is my spot I don't know what it was but it just um, was another idea I wanted to follow up on so there was this one that was laying down and this beautiful line of the spine that often is created when when an animal lays down Okay, so I don't know if you can see it here on the bottom. This is that greeting. There was one bedded, and the one came over and um, just bent its head down a little bit and looked. And so what I'm looking for here is what is the high point on the back? I'm looking at is the head the high point? Is the back the high point? Is the rump the tail? What's the position of the tail? What's the position of the legs relative to the nose, the snout, and axis of the neck? So this is what I'm working with. 
And I feel like I want the, the fragility of the encounter. You know, it can be make, you can make it or break it as a wolf with a close encounter, even with a, a related pack member. And so I'm gonna dig into the plinth here and um, make the legs look a little longer. I think they need to be longer anyway, but the longer they are, the more tenuous the feeling is and that sort of precarious feeling of the encounter between these two wolves is is what made me want to to try it okay so there it is there's another idea of an encounter so I think I got another one in me here tonight. The wolves howled at one point. And you see lots of different arrangements of, of wolves when they howl in art, painting, sculpture. And a lot of them play off the iconic. But when you see it in the wild, you see a lot of variety. In fact, here's a, a sketch right here. Um, of one that was laying down almost flat and just picked its head up to howl. There was another one who's standing on a slight knoll with its tail straight down and its head almost flat out. It wasn't raising its head and howling at the moon like you, you see on um, velvet pillows and things like that. It, it was um, a lot more understated, a lot more subdued. And a lot of meaning is conveyed in their vocalizations, not just howls, but barks and whines and other things. These, this particular sketch right here was the one I was thinking of. And the high point, again, I'm looking for large relationships that really set the mood and the foundation for the sculpture. In this case, the high point is just forward of the shoulders on the neck. So I'm going to uh, reflect that here in this piece and I also realize I need to lift those legs a little higher. I want it to be a little more leggy in its look. All right, so there are my final bits on this piece and the last of these three sketches to try to figure out what ideas I like. Tell me which ones you like. Is it the standing wolf? That howl? Low and subdued for the pack down below? Is it that sort of more intimate sibling connection that came about in some quieter moments of that pack's traverse? Or is it the attentive view of that bedded wolf looking down upon the rest of the world from its seated position? Which one's your favorite? I hope you enjoyed this. I'm George Buman, and please visit us on ayellowstonelife.com and sign up for that newsletter for monthly updates. And visit us on Facebook, A Yellowstone Life. Take care, and we'll see you again soon.